This video addresses the 5th grade math standard that volume is additive. Specifically, we will be looking at composite figures to show this. Volume is additive. Well, this is a composite figure. And there are two characteristics that make it a composite figure. One, we don't really have a name for it. It's not a rectangular prism, it's not a cylinder, it's not a triangular prism. We're not sure what to call it. And two, perhaps more importantly, it's composed of two or more other shapes. In fifth grade, we focus almost exclusively on rectangular prisms. You could have composite shapes with any other shape. In fifth grade, we're going to be looking at rectangular prisms. The first thing you do when you have a composite shape is you need to break it down into shapes we do know how to find the volume. Because there is no formula to find the volume of this entire shape. And to break it apart, we're going to look at this L shape I'm outlining on my composite figure. That is the base. You notice the base because it's the face of the figure that's layered back. Notice how it's the same shape all the way back. That makes this the base. Now that we have the base outline, let's split it up. We're going to split it up into two rectangles. We can do it either this way or this way. Either way works, you'll get the same volume. Your composite figure will end up looking like this. Next, I recommend that you label the rectangular prisms. I'm going to label this first rectangular prism A and this second rectangular prism B. So when we say that volume is additive, we find the volume of A, the volume of B, and then we add them together. Again, it's volume of A plus volume of B to get my total volume. What does this look like applied? Well, just like the previous screen, I'm going to split my composite figure like this, creating my rectangular prism A and my rectangular prism B. Instead of trying to hold all of these numbers in your head, just jot them down. So here's my A and here's my B. Well, in order to find volume, we know it's length times width times height. Let's take a look at figure A first. What's my length? Well, if you look here, there is no measurement. But remember properties of rectangles. The opposite sides are equal. So we know that the length is 3. Well, what's the width? Again, we don't have the width written down here, but I wonder if we could look elsewhere on the shape. Hmm, how long? Look down there, it's 2. Now here's a helpful hint. If it's a prism, the width does not change. So if that's 2, then this one's 2. This length is 2. This length is 2. And this length is 2. So the width is 2. And since we know that the width is the same throughout the figure, we know the width for B is also 2. And finally, we have the height. Well, I have two numbers that show height here, 13 and 8. But notice, this line actually broke the 13 up. So that 13 is no longer the measurement I'm using. So the height is 8. Okay, let's look at B. The length is 7, the width we've already established is 2, and the height is 5. Some students might have attempted to call the length 4, but notice that the 4 does not extend all the way out. That's why the 7 is the length. Now it is time to find the volume of each individual prism. Length times width times height. So A's volume is 48 cubic units. B's volume is 70 cubic units. Remember, volume is additive, so we just add these up. So the entire figure has a volume of 118 cubic units. Something many students struggle with is, what if there are missing side lengths? Notice that I have another composite figure, but we don't know what this side length and this side length are. One or both of those side lengths will be needed in order to find the volume of this composite shape. What you're going to be doing is looking at parallel sides. What we're going to do is we're going to take the longest lines in my base, the 20 and the 18, and we're going to use those to compare to the other sides to figure out our missing parts. Let's start with the 20. We know that the length of this entire line is 20, so if we move it down, that length is still 20. It's still 20, it's still 20, it's still 20. Stop here and look, we have 9. So we know that this section is worth 9. Well, if the whole thing is 20, and this section is worth 9, what's the other part? 20 minus 9 is 11. So this other section must be 11. So if we continue to move this line down, we see that our missing side length down here is actually 11. 
It works the same way with the 18. This line is 18 long no matter where it goes. Ooh, we've hit a parallel side. Hmm, that's our missing side, so it's not helpful yet. But if we keep on going all the way to the end, we see that this section is worth three. Well, if the entire thing is 18, and part of it is worth three, then the remaining part must be 15. So, if we move our line back, remembering that the top section is three, and the bottom section is 15, to give us 18, we know that our missing side length must be 15. Now that we have our missing side lengths, we can break up our composite figure into two rectangular prisms. For this one, I'm gonna break it up right here. I'm gonna label this prism A, and this prism B. So now I need to figure out the length, width, and height. Notice that the width, or how many layers, is two. That's going to remain the same no matter where I am on the figure. So the width for both A and B is two. So we need to find the volume of A and the volume of B. There are several things to notice. First of all, the widths are the same. In a composite figure, the width is always the same as long as it's a prism. If the widths aren't the same, they'd have to label it differently. Also, notice that we did not use the 15 because we wanted this entire length. We wanted the entire 18. And third, the 20 was split, so we also didn't use the 20. Once we find the volumes, we add them together because volume is additive. 450 cubic units. Here's another example of missing side lengths, but this time it's the longer sides that are missing. The same principle applies. We look at the parallel sides. Let's start with the vertical line. If we move it across, we stop here. We recognize that this section must be eight. And then if we keep on moving, the other section must be two. Eight plus two is 10. So the whole side length must be 10. So we can move it all the way back. And we now know this long side is worth 10. Okay, let's do the same thing with the horizontal side. Again, we look at parallel sides. We move it up, so this section is four, and this section is seven. Four plus seven equals 11. So this whole side length must be 11. Now, we split it into two rectangular prisms. I'm going to choose to do it right here, making this my prism A and this my prism B. And notice the width of the entire prism is five. So here are our dimensions. Length times width times height equals volume. Volume is additive, so the total volume is 390 cubic units. Here's an example where volume has been taken out of a rectangular prism. The same principle applies except for we're going to subtract instead of add. First we find the volume of the entire rectangular prism. Here are the dimensions. And here are the dimensions of the part taken out. Notice that the width is still 3. The volume of the entire figure is 270 cubic units, and the part taken out is 36 cubic units. Subtract them to find the remaining volume, 234 cubic units. This last example shows what happens if there's even more rectangular prisms. So I'm going to break it up into three this time, giving me rectangular prism A, rectangular prism B, and rectangular prism C. Notice that my 16 has been broken up into a section of six, and so this section down here must be worth 10. Just like before, find the volume of the individual prisms and then add them together. Here are the dimensions. Notice that the width of three appears on every rectangular prism. Use the formula to find the volumes, then add them together, and you get 594 cubic units. To recap, first of all, volume is additive. So if you have a composite figure, find the volume of the individual figures, then add them together. And two, if you have missing side lengths, use parallel sides to compare and figure them out.